Thank you, Captain, very much. Well, is Israel yeah. worried about bin Laden's threat? So that's what I asked the former Prime Minister, Benjamin yeah. Netanyahu, during an exclusive chat. Well, it's not new. He's um, marked Israel as the uh, uh, extension of the United States. We're the small Satan, you're the great Satan, and he wants to um, annihilate us both. I think he wants to start with Israel, but from his actions on September 11th, he's, uh, he works in parallel. Uh, this is the kind of uh, hate uh, and fanaticism that uh, we're encountering from the Hamas because there's no real difference between the Hamas and Al-Qaeda. They're uh, brothers in, uh, in hate uh, and in violence, uh, and it's what we're up against. Uh, ultimately, Israel will have to remove this militant Islamic terror base uh, from, its, uh, uh, from the environs of Tel Aviv. It's basically like having uh, an Al-Qaeda base uh, next to New York City. You wouldn't tolerate it, neither do we. Still, global sympathies seem to swing as this drags on toward the Palestinians. Uh, Senator Hillary Clinton, who's up for Secretary of State in her confirmation hearings yesterday, Prime Minister, described the tragic uh, human cost borne by Palestinians as well as Israelis. Are, are you sensing maybe a different tone from an Obama administration? No, I think that you could uh, hear the concern for the, uh, the tragic loss of innocent lives on the Israeli and Palestinian sides from Israelis. Uh, we're the ones who are concerned with, the, uh, with any civilian that is uh, killed and put is, is put in harm's way. But this, uh, I think, is brought squarely on Hamas's soldiers, and I heard pretty much the same from, uh, uh, from Senator Clinton. Uh, because Hamas is both firing on civilians and hiding behind civilians. So the Israeli army has to, is faced with a very, very difficult task. I mean, what do you do when thousands of rockets are fired on your cities from terrorists who uh, embed themselves in homes and schools, uh, put their weapon caches in mosques, their R&D labs for producing explosives in universities? Uh, a serious and responsible government tries to minimize civilian casualties while it uh, targets as precisely to, uh, as it can the terrorists. But under no circumstances uh, do we want to give immunity to the terrorists because you know they'll do it again and again. And not only against us, they'll do it to others. They'll do it against you as well. So you didn't read anything into Mrs. Clinton's uh, saying that the price being paid by Palestinian civilians as well as Israelis must only increase our determination to find a just and lasting peace agreement. Well, I, I would say that we all share that desire for peace, uh, but I don't think you can make peace with somebody who's, uh, uh, who's out to destroy you. You can make peace with an enemy only if that enemy wants to relinquish the war and uh, embrace the peace. That's what we did with uh, uh, Egypt under the late uh, President Anwar Sadat. That's how we had peace with Jordan and have it uh, because of the uh, valiant efforts of the late uh, King Hussein of Jordan. Uh, and this has continued with both countries. But in the case of uh, Hamas and its patron, Iran, they openly declare, both of them, their desire to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Iran is racing to produce a nuclear weapon to that end. And so with people who want to destroy you, you have no, uh, uh, there's no compromise. What compromise could we make with them? The, the method of our destruction? Of course not. So in the case of this forward terrorist base of Iran uh, next to our cities, uh, ultimately, that regime will have to go. And the minimal thing that we have to do now, uh, as, uh, as we approach the question of a ceasefire, is to ensure that this enclave is not resupplied by Iran with long-range missiles that can hit every part of our country. But what, uh, and what, I think what that's a minimal that... goal that all Israelis share. Okay, I, I apologize, sir. But what no. if part of that agreement calls for the U.S. opening up contacts with Hamas, as President-elect Obama has promised to do, which, by the way, would be a first for U.S. president. How do you feel about that? Well, I heard uh, the, the uh, president, the uh, uh, secretary of state uh, designate uh, Hillary Clinton say very clearly that uh, the United States will not negotiate with Hamas unless it abandons uh, the goal of destroying Israel and uh, renounces terror. And I, I don't think they're about to do that. So. Um, I, I don't think that's a, an issue. The issue really is to enable Israel to complete its, um, its objectives, its minimal objectives of uh, creating uh, uh, some kind of defense against 
the uh, future rocketing of its cities. Uh, I think there is another issue that will be perhaps the single most important issue facing uh, incoming president-elect uh, Obama, and that is the decision to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons for two reasons. One is that they intend to use those weapons directly against us. And the second is that you can imagine what would happen to uh, these Iranian bases on the Mediterranean, one in Gaza and one in Lebanon uh, with Hezbollah, if its proxy terrorists also enjoy a nuclear umbrella. I mean, the prospect of having a militant Islamic regime uh, committed to Israel's destruction, a sworn enemy of the United States, uh, having nuclear weapons which it can uh, give to its proxies is something very, very frightening indeed. And even if it doesn't give it to its proxies, the fact that it will wield a nuclear sword over the heads of the United States, of Israel, uh, and many other countries is something that should uh, give halt to uh, anyone concerned with the peace of the world. I think this is the biggest uh, and most fundamental challenge facing the United States and the world. You know, uh, uh, sir, incoming uh, Vice President uh, Joe Biden had said that it wouldn't at all surprise him if uh, Barack Obama were tested uh, in his first few weeks in office. Um, do you think that will indeed be the case and, and that al-Qaeda, maybe with the release of this tape, is signaling that? Well, I have no doubt that the, uh, the terrorists and their patrons um, or the uh, uh, terrorist states and their proxies uh, will uh, continuously challenge uh, the leadership of the United States. But uh, from my two conversations with uh, President-elect Obama, I could see that he understood this threat. He, he said that he was absolutely committed to uh, uh, making sure that Iran uh, would not acquire nuclear weapons, and I think this was very important. He was also... Uh, equally adamant about resisting terrorism. Uh, he was in Sderot, one of the towns that has been most pelleted by these uh, rockets over the years. Uh, and he said if my two daughters were sleeping in a house that had been rocketed there, he would do everything in his power to prevent it. Well, Israel is now doing not everything in its power, because we're using only a fraction of our power, but everything that we can legitimately do to, to prevent uh, future rocketing. And uh, I expect that the incoming American administration will uh, will remain uh, steadfast in its support for this battle against uh, war criminals and terrorists who, who, are, uh, who see both of us uh, as their enemies and their right to see both of us as their enemies because we represent the forces of civilization and they represent the forces of darkness.